Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to explore a little change we made on CodeDamn website, which reflects why Next.js is so fast. And what is the difference between server-side rendering and static site generation in Next.js? Why one is way faster than the other? Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So you see when you land on CodeDamn.com, you get a homepage like this. Even when you start exploring pages like dashboard, courses, and co not exactly courses right now, but something like learning paths, full stack web developer learning paths, you'll see that a lot of these pages open instantaneously. And if we open the inspector over here, and if I go to networks tab and in the doc section, and if I refresh this page, you're gonna see that if I do it a few times, you're gonna see that the time section over here is 115 millisecond and the waterfall for this particular request that is the main document which is the html which basically initiates every other request call whether that's a javascript call whether that's a style sheet whether that's images and so on that happens after this document is loaded and this takes the first byte from the server, from the endpoint, from the end server to my computer takes 100 milliseconds to happen, right? So the request is sent and then my browser waits for 100 milliseconds before it receives the first byte from the server itself. Now this page over here is statically generated and stored in an S3 bucket in our architecture that this page is generated, already generated and stored in an S3 bucket which sits behind a CloudFront distribution. You can see that we also get a cache hit from CloudFront, which is in front of an S3 bucket, which is a CDN, right? So this is good because when we do something like this, we are serving a static page, a static .html page directly from a CDN, which is as fast as it could get. But a lot of times you need customization and personalization. For example, in our case, what we did is that now if you go to account settings the page which you get over here is server side rendered that means when i refresh this there is no data fetching happening on the front end there are no loaders nothing like that you actually get the complete data whatever you have built from the server itself so that is awesome because this means that the user does not need to see any loaders or anything and pretty much if you also have your javascript disabled this page would work just like that and you don't need JavaScript on the front end to make a lot of calls and data swapping. So that also saves a bunch of time, but this obviously has a cost. Now this page over here is server side rendered, right? So if we again perform the same activity, the one which we did with the other one, the other page, now you're gonna see that if I refresh it a couple of times, it still stays around 200 to 300 milliseconds of time range. Right, so if I do this in this case, for example, and in case of 185, let's go ahead and take a look at this waiting time, the time to first byte. And you can see it's significantly larger if you compare in percentages, it's almost like a 100% increase from the last request. And if I do it a multiple times, and if you average this out, you're gonna see it probably lands somewhere in 1.75 to 2x more time. Now you see this waiting time to first byte again like i said in the last request this time was the time from the request sent to the first byte received from cloudfront cdn file right which is a static file just sitting right there ready to be served but this page over here this page needs to be constructed this page needs to be built and this page requires a node process to run why because we use next.js and next.js uses react and react needs a node runtime to convert its react components into server-side html into regular html on the server so you're gonna see that this page over here is constructed on the fly by the node.js process uniquely for every single user every single time because obviously I cannot cache this at a settings level because, well, I don't want anyone else to see my settings. So this has to be computed every single time, which results in a slightly higher waterfall. But you can see that still it's not a deal breaker 
time right it's not like we are taking seconds to execute and build this if you compare it from the last run we had close to 100 milliseconds of latency in time to first byte in cases of static site generated pages and in this case it's just 100 milliseconds more so i mean it's fine because if you compare this with the total execution time you're gonna realize that this option probably is better compared to sending an empty structure on the page and then making an api call and loading it because in that case you have to show the people loaders and uh, then you have to make a separate backend call and so on and if you if you have the option to make that separate backend call on the server itself then why not because it provides much better experience if you remove that 100 millisecond delay which you see over here now this of course assumes that your api responses are fast themselves because if your api in itself is slow then obviously this would also increase significantly and that would actually lead to bad user experience because the user might see a white spinning page for a couple of seconds and you don't want that if that is the case if your api itself is slow then you should probably stick to static site generation plus loading the data on the front end but in our case for example it just adds 100 milliseconds to the loading time and gives us the option to remove the loaders and everything completely from the front end so this is one of the many examples of static site generation versus server-side rendering which we are actively doing on codedam now so it's a mix of both on some pages it is ssg on others it is ssr and you can see we will be doing a little bit of experiments and shifting a bunch of other pages to server-side rendering to improve performance and experience so yep that's pretty much it on why nextjs is so fast so powerful because a lot of times you're going to see you are using only static site generation on Next.js and doing a lot of data fetching on front end. So that's awesome because you get fast pages and then you can spin up loaders and show some placeholders while the data loads from an API. But at the same time, Next.js gives you the option to provide server-side rendering as well if you want to do that, which would render your whole page on the server itself and then send it down the stream. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We cover Next.js more in the full stack learning path on Codedam. So make sure you check that out as well. That's all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Codedam's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching